Hello, how are you? Happy Sunday evening to you. Uh, I know I was here just a couple hours ago um, and said goodnight, but I had to come back on and just talk about the Merseyside Derby because um, that was brilliant. I feel so excited. I feel so pumped watching women's football on a Sunday night on Sky Sports. Um, excellent, excellent to see. It's everything that I've ever wanted. Um, and now it's happening. It's just it's just brilliant. The, the fan turnout tonight. Uh, as well, Anfield just excellent, absolutely brilliant, and a massive win for Everton over Liverpool. Three goals and and three, well, two out of three very very good goals as well, and a very good performance from Everton. Don't get me wrong, going into this game, I thought Liverpool would absolutely do it. I thought they would edge them. I just think Liverpool can't be underestimated this season, but I just feel Everton just. They weren't at it in their opening game of the season. There's always something missing with them. There's maybe always a problem. But today, you know, today they look very, very good. I thought today they played great football. Brian Sorensen seems to have them ticking quite nicely. And I know it's just one game, but there was something about them tonight that looked very organised, very tidy. And a couple of stars in there as well. Of course, Hannah Benison, she got the third goal tonight. Um, one of the most expensive players in Europe. Um, with the assist from Jess Park. Jess Park got the second goal of the night and Jess Park is set for an England call-up in no time at all. She got a move from Manchester City to go out on loan and I'm so glad to see it because she's a player you need to be seeing more and more week in, week out in the WSL. She needs to be getting those minutes. She needs to be getting that experience. And tonight she was absolutely outstanding. She ran away with it, stole the show um, and the skill and the pace and the energy that she has um, and the vision that she has as well is just so exciting. I just can't wait to see what she's going to do next. Um, and she was just she was just all over it tonight. So fair play to Jess Park. I think she's going to go very, very far. Perhaps the England call-up is not too far away. If she keeps playing this way, she could find herself uh, heading to the World Cup. She was just that good. The first goal for Everton came from Finnegan. And to be fair, it was, it was fine. It was just, I felt it was poor goalkeeping. Um, from their point of view as well, I just think Liverpool could have, you know, they could have done better um, at that point defensively and from a goalkeeper's goalkeeper's perspective as well. Um, the third goal, I mean, it came in the kind of final minutes of the game, um, and it was a bit of a mistake from Liverpool's Megan Campbell, um, and again Jess Park managed to get by her and make that room and that run and cr cross the ball over to Hannah Benison who put it away quite nicely. But Megan Campbell, I just want to focus on her for, for a couple of minutes because she uh, plays for the Republic of Ireland. Um, and I went out to see them uh, a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago now in Dublin for one of the World Cup playoff games against Finland. And um, she was right in front of me. And now I've seen her throw-ins before and I know her throw-ins are dangerous, but it's the sheer size of her hands that I'm like, wow. Um, and the way she holds the ball and maybe if you haven't been aware of this before if you were watching the game on Sky tonight and you'd seen it you'd be like what the heck she holds the the ball like a basketball player would hold you know basketball massive hands long arms very long torso um, and the way she can throw the ball into the box is just an absolute weapon for any side to have um, and it's no wonder she's she's starting every game because okay she made a bad mistake tonight um, she might not be the best player on the pitch, but that is such a, a deadly weapon to have. And we saw it so many times tonight. And we don't think then Liverpool have to be working on is just capitalising on that ball coming into the box and making sure they finish because they did have chances. Um, and it mostly did come from her balls going into the box as well. Um, and if you haven't seen Megan Campbell's throw-ins, just watch this video entire, entirely. And then when we finished, go and Google it or YouTube it because... It's, it's frightening, um, but very, very interesting to have indeed. Um, let's talk about the the fans there tonight, 27,500 at Anfield tonight. Um, and they stopped selling the tickets on Friday at four o'clock, reason being they wanted to plan for the amount of fans that were going to be there, the amount of paramedics they were going to need, um, and to plan everything ahead. Had they kept selling those tickets, you never know. It could have been 35,000, but to be able to sit down on a Sunday night and see that turnout, um, for the women's game uh, it's just brilliant uh, uh, th those are the games that I would have been worried about you know the 6.45 kickoffs on a Friday night or Sunday night you know how much is that going to bring fans in the fact that we were able to watch it on TV tonight and fans were able to be there at Anfield is special and what we've seen from this international break 
is um, the the women being able to utilise the main stadiums and somebody actually mentioned this at Arsenal yesterday. It's the the use of the the, the language the men's stadiums. Um, it's actually the main stadiums, and I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll start, I'll start using that as well, um, because at the end of the day, these clubs are all one club. You know, the women and the men, they are for the same club, um, and I think we're going to see more and more of it moving forward. And if they can sell that many tickets, then it's absolutely worth doing as well. Uh, a couple of legends there, and the crowd tonight as well, who got their their wee moment of air time. Uh, Ian Rush and John Barnes uh, in attendance, and I think that's, I think that's a good look as well. You know, I think when you see. People like that at the games who, who are so affiliated with the club. Um, fans take notice, fans want to be part of that. They're such a huge influence. Um, and we've seen that from Arsenal along the years. And more recently, again, from, from Ian Wright, who was there yesterday at the North London Derby. And regularly, I see at Bodham Wood, he's always part of it. Um, so seeing the likes of Ian Rush there, sitting watching the game uh, and cheering on the girls is just it's absolutely brilliant. Um, they were disappointing, Liverpool tonight. I think definitely going in this game, I thought they were going to offer more. Um, the third goal, they could have done better um, at keeping off that. They had a couple of chances, um, but they're going to have to do more. I thought with the win against Chelsea, perhaps last week, you were going to maybe see a different side to Liverpool. We know they've got a good manager. We know there's a, a few decent players in that squad as well. Um, but they have to make some changes. Sorry, I think the, the screen's are wobbling a little bit. We just get on with it. Um, but yeah, they, you know, Matt Beard will be looking on that game going, we could have absolutely done better there. Um, and a few great players in there as well. Stengal, I thought, was quiet tonight. I mean, we didn't see a lot of her last week, but she got two goals, scored two penalties against Chelsea. Um, so we know that she can do something there. Um, but there definitely seemed that something was lacking tonight from Liverpool. But a massive win uh, for Everton and a huge three points for them as well. 3-0 uh, against Liverpool in, t in front of 27,500 fans. That's just my favourite bit of the night. Two pitch invaders as well, by the way. Two pitch invaders. Cool. Um, that's not cool. Don't do that at home. Uh, also, I just want to take a minute to focus on uh, Leicester against Aston Villa. That happened at the King Power Stadium today. Wasn't on the TV, it was on the FA Player app. Leicester now Villa 2, another big win for Aston Villa. Leicester are the team, I think, that have to definitely change this year. They, we know that, we know that anyway. Um, and today they were not good at all. Aston Villa also were not that great. They were just a better side. Um, another goal from Rachel Daly. It came from a penalty three minutes in um, from Simmons. She gave away, which had dived down. Just it was, a, it was a silly thing to give away. Rachel Daly put it away nicely and then the second goal as well came from Emily Gilnick um, who has had a quiet season, a quiet time shall we say since joining Aston Villa for a big striker that she is. She's always that bit off it at times but great to see her getting that goal as well today. Uh, Leicester didn't really get the chance to trouble anything and Aston Villa despite getting a good win, two goals and a big three points need to do better moving forward as well. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for Villa this season. I've said it before. I obviously have my 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 relationship there because my twin sister's there, Rusha Littlejohn, hoping she's going to be back in the pitch soon. She broke her foot. Um, so I am so tied to Villa, so tied to what the they've done with bringing in Rachel Daly as well. Hanson going in there as well. Uh, Kenza Daly in there. There's some great players. So interesting to see what they're going to do moving forward as well but a very very good weekend all round it feels like the the amount of fans turning out has been the the real story of the weekend as well that's what it feels like to me uh, there's definitely an appetite it's definitely going places and long may that continue as well